Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? My name is Kyle, you know me as Dragonmar, and welcome to a new video. In this video, we'll be going over a Bronze Phoenix, that's right, we've got a Bronze Duelist VOD review for you today. I hope you guys enjoy that. If you do, remember to hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and tap that bell. I also want to remind you guys, I am live pretty much every single day, starting at 12pm Eastern. Would love to see you guys on stream at twitch.tv slash Dragonmar. We just became partnered, it's awesome, thank you so much for that. And without any further ado, let's start the video. All right, and just like that, the game is starting. Looks like Bradley actually uh, loads in a little bit late here, but Bradley is playing at Bronze 1. He's on Phoenix here on the map Ascent. Now, starting off on defense as well, um, which I think is preferred in most situations to, to rack up some of those rounds if possible. And it looks like the bomb is going down here over on A. Now, he's up here in this heaven position, uh, and he doesn't have flashes. So, I, I don't think it's his fault. He didn't even load in for the buy. But obviously, if you're going to play Phoenix, you really want to buy those flashes on pistol rounds. It's a lifesaver, especially when you're uh, retaking a site like this. Being able to flash over by generator here would be absolutely massive. All right, so he's going to molly. Doesn't look like that molly really lands anywhere. Oh, he has some time there to take the shot on the omen. Yeah, and right here, this is a perfect example of just being a little too hesitant uh, as you can see there, he kind of went forward, backed up, went forward again, and then backed up into a, a Silva Arrow. It's just one of those situations where you have to be a little more decisive. Uh, you got to jump down there with your team. And if you are going to jump down, remember, guys, you want to jump towards Generator. Um, as you generally have a better shot there of getting the kills and potentially even um, you know, being able to right-click someone in the air. And now, one thing I want to talk about while we watch uh, the gameplay here is that whenever we're looking at a Phoenix, um, so a Duelist in this situation, um, especially at this rank, we want to pay attention to a few things. We want to see, first of all, how are they actually playing the role of a Duelist? Are they the entry fragger? Or are they baiting their teammates? You know, are they the last one in? How are they playing this Duelist? Because I think that's really, really important to sort of... Um, establish the play style of the agents especially at a lower rank so that's what i'm going to be very curious about as we watch bradley here approach mid i want to see if he's really playing this role or if maybe um he'd be better off on another agent and looks like the other phoenix was sitting in pizza waiting for him all right so bradley gonna start over here in a main looks like he's holding a pretty decent angle here it's obviously a tight angle so gonna be tough to hit those shots but they walk into that wall over there um you'll have a nice shot on them Crosshair placement seems okay, you know, oh, not so good now. Now, okay, what I'm going to say here is if he keeps going to take this fine, but you have to be very careful when you take that orb, uh, he's not really clearing anything back there, and there can definitely be players there. I would just tell him to be a little bit more careful next time because um, he is he is asking to get destroyed. But he's going to rotate over here into CT. Oh, looks like players going up tree. I would, I would have already started rotating here, and that spray there, the problem started way too low. Um, he started way too low. As you're seeing, he's hitting the legs of the omen, and the omen was at the bottom of steps. Um, so just have to bring that crosshair up higher if you want to get these kills. Um, as you saw, you hit him three times. He hit you twice, but he hit the headshot. All right, once again, sitting over here in A main. Does not look like the enemy team is putting much pressure over here. It looks like the rotate coming in. Sova was able to, it looks like, delay them at least. But now that you've rotated off site, you have left A completely open. So it is possible for the enemy team to take the A bomb site for free. Just looking at your positioning right now. Yep, you want to get behind cover. You never want to be standing out here in the middle of this sort of uh, lane. It's just, you're just asking to get killed. So right now, I think a bunch of players were just spotted. I would rotate. I would at least go over to tree um, just because I don't think you guys have the bomb down right now. So you're not actually getting too much value out of everybody standing in middle. If you had the bomb, that would be way different. But like right now, as you're making your way back over here, you know, you have to be extra cautious, right? Because now the enemy could actually be here potentially if they ran around CT. There comes an arrow. Looks like they're probably going to come through a main. You can get a nice angle on that. If you walk around this on the ledge to the right, you can get a nice angle into A main. Looks like a, a, a player on a catch has died. Okay, so now you know. Player planting close gen and another player on site. Because I, I think we heard somebody. Yeah, there they are. One in hell, one in gen. 
just oh oh okay I would have said just shoot the Sova, just run, or excuse me, just shoot the Omen because he had the bomb. That way you secure the round no, no matter what. Um, but you guys were pushing in there together. I think what really helped there, what maybe some people wouldn't even notice, is the distraction from the Sova. Your Sova was able to provide so much pressure and push the enemies all over the place there, especially that Omen, um, that it just allows you to walk straight into sight and not have to worry about anything. So that was a nice play there by your Sova and uh, a, a good job uh, getting onto sight and killing the... Uh, Sova under uh, the enemy Sova in hell. All right, so we're on round five, and um, Bradley actually has his ultimate here. So, you know, I'm not saying use it right now and just run it down A main, but they are, oh, they are on the orb. I think this is the first time we've seen uh, some pressure early. Okay, yep, definitely. Oh, did, she probably didn't want to make a noise there. Oh, yeah. So, just got to be careful. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. So, this is um, this is a positioning mistake, and I'm going to walk you guys through this really quick. Let me just go back here. So, arrow comes in. You can't get spotted by this arrow. Get spotted. Now, they know exactly where he is. Now, the sage is trying to hold cat, but you are sitting in tree as well. The problem there is... If she dies, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to die. So in that situation, honestly, you, you probably just want to reposition yourself out of there or hold cat with your teammate and, and let the enemies come in or go to the other side of that wall and try making an aggressive play. You kind of have to know your timing there <clears throat> and you have to know you don't have all the time in the world to just hang out in tree because the push could come from cat at any moment now you'd like to rely on your sage to be able to get that kill unfortunately she doesn't but sometimes in those situations you have to know when to get a little more aggressive to get yourself out of harm's way and it looks like in that situation you just took a little bit too long there went for a reload and got shot in the back all right the ultimate coming in here running it down a main and that was not a good use of the ultimate i would say so I see what you were going for, but you went off of no information. And that's a big problem with people using their ultimates when they have no info on anything going on, whether it's a Sova ult, Brimstone ult, whatever it may be. Um, when you guys just use your ultimate out of nowhere, you're not actually getting that much value sometimes, and you end up just wasting it. Now, had the enemy team been there, great. But it was a complete guess at that point. They had only come that way, I think, once so far. So... In that, or maybe, maybe twice actually, but in that situation, you know, you need a little more info. Wait for some footsteps. Wait for someone to tap the orb. That way you at least can guarantee somebody's there. You know what I mean? Um, but regardless, in the mid now, here we have the bomb down. So Spike is down in market. Now, I'd like to see a heal here. I don't I don't really know why Bradley's sitting on 59 health when he has a molly available. Because that makes you two shot. Guy, close, close pizza. I don't know if Bradley knows. Does get the kill. Now, a little hesitant there on the spray, as you guys noticed. Um, I will rewind this really quick. I just want to watch it again. Watch this. Watch this. See how he's lagging behind a little? All of that comes down to first shot accuracy. When you miss that first shot, throws off everything else. And then you're playing catch up, right? Then you're playing catch up, trying to catch up to that enemy who's running. All right. So, starting round seven off here, over towards A main. A lot of pressure going on towards B. So, what does Bradley do? He starts rotating. So, I think this is something that now we have uh, noticed throughout most of these rounds is the tendency to over rotate. Um, and I think that that's something that a lot of people can work on, right? It, it's not so much that, you know, going to help your team is bad and, and you shouldn't rotate. It's just the fact that, you know, you've got everybody alive, right? Players are pushed up in aggressive spots. You don't have to push up, right? You really just want to play your positions and play smart. Um, if you look where your teammates are, your jet is pushed up mid. Your Viper has now ulted into B main. Now, you are going to rotate into mid here. Now, the reason mid is okay to go to is because your teammate has left it to come over to A, which I'm not entirely sure why. But regardless, the Omen does TP. And it actually looks like Omen is able to TP behind you guys. Um, so that, unfortunately, is one of those things where when you are kind of out in the, you know, just wandering around, you want to try to find that Omen if possible. I have no idea how he was just able to TP and get two kills. Um, that's crazy. Regardless, though, we're on the retake now. So let's see if we can make something happen here. Going to flash out, which is a good flash. Now we know a player is in hell. Spraying through. Got a flame wall here. You remember, you can use your flame wall to get on a site. That is generally uh, a good idea. 
Let's see what the play is. Gotta check Jen. Able to, f able to find the siege out. That is a, by the way, chat, very, very bad spot to play right there. Finds the omen during a TP. One bullet left. And there comes the Sova ult. All right, so you've got to get around the Sova ult. And there you go. Nicely done. That was a very nice play, actually. Um, being able to get those kills. All three, actually, on your own. Unfortunately, though, no defuse. And you guys will lose the round. Okay, so the next round starting off here. Looks like Bradley has gone over to Cat here with the Phoenix. Now, I love playing Cat with Phoenix. Just simply because of the ability to flash people. Um... Yeah, it's awesome. You know, you got these all these different corners you can ult, you can flash from. Oh, that was not the play to make right there. Oh boy. So right there in that situation, when you are that low on health, you probably want to flash that corner once, then flame ball, then get out of there if possible. You really, really, really do not want to just swing that corner. Um, and unfortunately, be, be, simply because not that the ult is bad to do on cat. The ult's great on cat. The problem is that you have no information on if someone's holding that close angle. And that was the worst case scenario. It was also probably one of the most likely scenarios too, right? That that guy is just sitting there. So you really have to be prepared for that. I think you want to try to flash it, flame wall, get out of there. And then live to uh, live the fight further into this round. All right. So another loss there. Currently down two to six here. Now, if they can pick up the remaining four rounds, Bradley and his team are still in a good position to win this game. Uh, let's see what the play is. Okay, gonna get smoked off on cat. Um, all right, just gonna spray the smoke. Gotta be careful, but we do have the phantom, so not too much to worry about there. All right, players are pushing through mid now. So when you, whenever you start seeing people push through mid, you have to be careful of cat. Remember, they're up mid. Someone's probably on cat. Player spotted bottom mid. Player spotted under top mid. Nice headshot there onto the omen. Oh, and in great control there as well onto the Sage. Some nice shots coming out of Bradley on this round so far. I like what I'm seeing. Currently in a 1v2. It's definitely winnable here. We have full utility aside from the ult. That is plenty to retake a site. All right, and there's the bomb. Let's see what Bradley's approach is here. I want to see sort of how he's going to tackle this. I don't think we've seen a retake in a 1v2 yet. So these are the rounds that make a difference, guys. These are the rounds that are going to separate you from the rest of the competition. They're going to take you to the next level. When you can start winning these clutch situations, that's going to make the big difference. And right here, I'm going to rewind this. just want to show you guys this. Walking in the site. Just slowly walking. See how he's walking and he, and he walks out through that doorway into the open and he's still not checking the steps. That is um, just a problem of clearing and your pathing. Whenever you are coming into an angle that you have not fully cleared, you have to check it completely. You can't just go slow. That was a situation where Bradley probably should have swung to his left, um, counter strafed or whatever it may be, but you can't just walk the whole way there. You got to go a little bit quicker than that and potentially even flash in in that situation. Um, once you clear it to your left, you just, you got to make a different play there, I think. Nonetheless, down two to seven, go to peak cat here. Does spot, I believe that was the Reyna. And decides that I will not fight that fight. I don't blame you there. Not bad. You don't really want to die in these situations. Okay, the repeak does come in. There. One thing I noticed about the repeak, a little bit high there on the crosshair placement, remember? Um, no one's going to be up cat at that point. Or if they are, that would be very surprising. So you just want to make sure you got your crosshair in the right spot there to peak uh, mid-link. But once again, your jet's making a big flank. Sova has pushed up as well. You guys have all the information you need to know that this is going to be towards B. Just depends how you want to play it. Now, you could sit over here and mark it if you wanted. And I think that is a smart idea. Ooh, I... Okay, I probably wouldn't have pushed that, but you can get a heal, so you're fine. Uh, honestly, in this situation, I, I think I would let them come out. Um, and then just, like, start a crossfire with your Viper and your Sage. But I actually don't mind the shot either. I think it's... It, it was fine. Risky, obviously, because you, you took, I think, 145 damage. So, barely lived there. But... 4v2, you guys are in good shape here to pick up your third round. 30 seconds left. And let's see what the play is. No target left. Boom. All right, so looks like they have started moving. Your Sova goes down. Now, your Sova was crucial there because he was holding that sort of uh, rear push. You know, I'm, I'm noticing you're not using your flame ball at all to heal yourself here, Bradley. I definitely, definitely get in the habit of doing that. Now, 
2v1 retake. Oh, all right. Yeah, so I was going to say, use your flashes in these situations, right? It's crucial. Also, you definitely should have taken that bomb to get your ults. Um, yeah, you definitely should have taken that bomb. Always check your ult points. Make sure if you're if you're one away, especially if you're a Phoenix, uh, it's definitely worth it for you to get that bomb. Diffuse. Yeah, so one thing I just want to touch on there about that retake was generally, guys, if you are going to 2v1 retake, you want to be entering site at the same time and if possible off of a flash. The enemy is probably going to look where the flash occurred because they know a player is there. Um, in that situation, Bradley's teammate was just able to get the kill before he had to worry about that. Um, but in general, you do kind of want uh, to go in at the exact same time if possible. That way, even if one of you dies, your teammate should be able to trade that death out. Now, though, your Sova is in a tough spot. Your Sova's in wine. Um, and I think they're going to start pushing him. So you might want to support him if possible. Nice kill onto the player. In tree. Now, you do have ult here. And I do like this play. I like the play going into cat. Yep. I think everything here is looking good so far. I might have flashed out. Oh, don't. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, no. Yeah, you don't need to shoot that wall. Um. You don't have much time in the Phoenix ult. So just go around the wall in that situation. Flash over it even if you want to. Remember, you still have your flashes. Um, yeah, that's just a situation where I think you overthought things a little bit. Or maybe you thought you had a bit more time than you did. Alright, so 2v2 here. Bomb down. Things are looking good. I like your stages positioning. This should catch somebody off guard. Nice. There's the crossfire. One more player there. She reloads. The 1v1. And you win it. Nicely done there. Good shots. A little low in the crosshair, right? No headshots. Um, your Sage gave away her positioning. So she probably should have fallen back or fallen off. You really want to make sure these players have to come through the arch before they see you. If you're going to play on a wall like that. But you did a good job holding things down there. Uh, and you got a nice call on the Reina for your fourth round. And let's see if you guys can pick up five. Final round of the half. 5-7, definitely not good for defenders, um, but you definitely want 5, you know, uh, 4 is, is even more dangerous and anything below 4 and you are in some trouble. Let's see what the play is here though, a lot of pressure looks like over towards the B-bomb site. Bradley gonna start rotating, looks like a 2 for 1 trade, looking good for the attackers. I would, I would keep running, yeah, no need to walk back there, remember, you just want to get over here as quick as you can. Looks like a player was up towards the market. Alright, bad timing on the flash. You end up blinding yourself. Omen probably just TP'd behind you. You know Sage is down on sight now. Nice kill on the Omen. And an even better kill on the Sage. Now you know Phoenix was in main. Oh, you know he was in main. Run past him. This is good. I like this. I would maybe use a flame wall here just to give you some cover. All right, so that was a great clutch. Now, what I'm going to say about that is you got to be a bit quicker in the decisions. I, 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 once again, you're doing the right thing. You're a little bit slow, though. You know the Phoenix was in main from previous uh, shots during that round, I think, when one of your teammates was flanking. That means you could have just as easily flameballed into sight. You only won that round because the Phoenix missed. If that Phoenix hit a shot, you were dead. So that's why it's so important that you use your utility to the best of your ability because you want to take away these possibilities for the enemy team um, to get these kills on you. So in that situation, how do you use your flame wall? You can run into sight. You still force the Phoenix to push you. You know, you still molly the same spot. Still do all of that if you want to. Um, but you take away that first shot possibility from the Phoenix, from the enemy Phoenix. And I think that, you know, you just got a little lucky there and you missed. You still made a great play though. Nice round. All right. So starting off round two now, now Bradley here is 17 and seven. So he's doing pretty well, especially when you look at what his team has been able to accomplish. However, the amount of mistakes that we're seeing um, really tells a different story. And, and essentially what it tells me is that Bradley has the potential to be a much, much better player and a much higher rank in this game. He's winning clutch rounds. I think that his game sense is actually pretty decent uh, considering he's a bronze one. Um, you pair that with his aim, 
you know, and, and I think this is a player who, who can definitely do big things. The problem, though, is it seems like his positioning and sometimes the sort of reactions to these situations uh, is a little bit too slow and perhaps not always um, correct in, in, in the way he's going about things. So we'll have to keep paying attention to that. Starts off the pistol round here with a nice kill, which is exactly what you want to do. Start these pistols, pistol rounds off with a kill, and you are in a good spot to win these games. Players spotted in market, and that's the end of the first round. Nice job there securing the kill. Jet just kind of walks in to B, which was an interesting play, but it ended up working out. And I do want to touch on that jet point actually really quick. If you see your bomb carrier walking into a site, you generally want to go with them. I wouldn't just let the jet sit there uh, and walk in alone as I sit in main not really doing anything. Um, just because if she ends up dying on a site and, and you can't trade it just like this where you can't trade, um, you know, it, it just makes no sense, right? You never want to give up a free death and especially you don't want to lose the bomb. Holding main here though. Now you do have superior weapons, right? I, I don't know if they bought, but you maybe could have taken a, a swing there. Regardless, though, coming over here towards mid now. Sage will wall it. Yes. You have the right... Okay. A little bit... Not enough shots fired on those bursts. I think you are two-tapping or something. I uh, want to go a little bit more than that. The, uh, the spray on the Spectre is pretty forgiving early on. Regardless, though, we will run on the site and go for the plant. Now, you didn't clear back site. This does worry me. Um... I generally would recommend just quickly swinging around generator, just checking to make sure nobody's there. Perhaps you guys already knew where the omen was. And with that being said, there is the round. Game is all tied up, 7-7. Seven, seven. All right, so I want to see a little bit better teamwork here too from Bradley. You know, just noticing some of these trading opportunities. I really want to see him, you know, notice that, hey, my teammate is in a dangerous spot. Can I trade out this death? Now, looks like getting pushed here from B main. It was a Phoenix, used a flash. He did fall back though. So let's see what the play is now. Um, we are three points off ult. So maybe grabbing some ult orbs uh, in these next rounds could be smart. You know, as the duelist, you know, it is kind of your job to go in first. Nice little flash around the corner. Just want to clear close right. All right. I would probably fall back. I believe orb was still there. Oh, actually just going to go into sight here. I think you might actually be body blocking your jet. But you do make it on the site. Now, hopefully your jet's going to clear back site. She's not clearing back site. This is incredibly scary. You do get the kill on the Phoenix, though. So right now, you just got to help. You got to get your Viper into sight. You're pushing up here. You know a player is in market. You also know a player is CT. I would fall back right now. You're not in a good position. Good idea. I like this. All right. Now, you do have a flame wall if you want to wall something off. Okay. I guess you and the sofa just want to stare at each other for a little bit. That's totally fine. I respect it. 4v3, so definitely still losable here, so you do want to play smart. Like I've said a million times, you're not using the flame wall to heal yourself. Right here, wall off these steps, heal yourself in the wall. Um, there should be no reason that you're, you're not using your flame wall at all in this game. Uh, it is incredibly valuable. It's not, obviously not the best ability, but it, it has a lot of value. So I'd like to see you use it a bit more, since I really don't think we've, even, we've seen it very often. All right, looks like the enemy team will indeed save this round. Um, and with that being said, you guys will take your first lead of the game, I believe, going up 8-7. All right, so next round starts. Once again, you're holding B main. Now, you have seen these guys push, I think, two or three times. So I actually think this is the smart play to hold back here because you know these guys like to push. But remember what I've been saying about these ult orbs. Right now, you could have an ult if you've been grabbing some orbs. And in this situation, it looks like you get a little bit distracted. I'm actually not entirely sure what happened there. I kind of want to rewind. I just want to see. So you're aiming in. Oh, you look at your jet for a second. Yeah. You just can't get distracted like that. You just got to keep holding that angle. You just, you let that Sova get a free kill um, when you are going to have him easily there. So that's just one of those situations where you can't have a distraction, especially when you're in a dangerous spot where the enemies have been getting aggressive B main. You just want to hold, hold strong there and, uh, and wait for that push. All right, so things tied up again, 8-8. Eight, eight. You do have your ult here, and also we are going towards the A bomb site. So here comes the aggressive ult, and I'd like to see a flash around the corner. No flash. Just going to clear hard. Closing the door, which is smart. Now, honestly, in that situation, when you close the door, I actually think you want to run it through when you're that late on your Phoenix ult. It has a lot to do with timing there. And because you didn't have much time left on your ult, 
I actually think you can get a lot more value by just clearing out tree, making sure in that situation that that guy couldn't shoot your teammates so freely like that. Maybe you don't kill him, but hopefully do some damage. So I think in that situation, when you're that low on time, you just want to run through tree there. I liked everything else though. I did like running over and uh, checking and then noticing, hey, no one's there. Oh no. Oh no. One more time. So the, the kind of a timing play here. In that situation, you just have to take your time. You, you're behind the Sova, take him out, or have that trigger discipline to hold on. Don't shoot the Sova. Kill the Sage first, then the Sova. In that situation, you notice you just start spraying right away. And because you're spraying right away, it completely throws you off. You're not even able to kill the Sova. Um, you try to transfer over to another player. It was just a mess there. You had a good opportunity there to get some, get some good kills. Um, you just got to take your time. Relax a little. Um, and, and have that trigger discipline to know that, hey, I don't have to shoot a guy with his back turned to me. I can wait a second here. All right, so defenders have taken the lead now, eight to nine. Nice little flash there. You know where he is. Good job just holding. You were, uh, you know, a little late on the reaction. I probably would have held that a bit differently, but you do get a headshot there. Nice shot. Now we're moving into sight. All right. Looks like there is a player over here on the steps and a player now in main. Good job killing the Sage. Yeah, so right there, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a player, I believe, in, in B main uh, for, for that part of the round. So that guy is going to come walking back towards you most likely. And in that situation, you just have to know you have a timer. How long can I stay on site? There's always a possibility you're going to get flanked there. And in that situation, he did come up behind. All right, currently down 8 to 10. Okay, gonna get spotted here now you have to be careful with these arrows uh with these recon bolts because remember a lot of sobas will use odins and stuff and they will spray you through that wall so i would just say be careful about that um because that would definitely catch you off guard i think since you haven't seen it and you'd essentially just be a free kill for the enemy team moving in towards the mid here looks like the enemy sage has been walling mid off I think right now you could destroy the wall if you want, but your team is positioned, is positioning themselves over for an A hit. I would try to get over there. Remember, you are the duelist. You want to be going in first for them. And right now, holding mid, you're just not getting much value for your team. Looks like you will find a player rotating, though. So there is one. But in the meantime, you lose the spike. Your teammate comes and rotates towards you. Like I've been saying, remember... When you are playing these duelists, it is very important that you are leading the charge into these sites, into these areas, using those flashes to clear out positions. And when you're not there, guess what? Your team does not have a flash. Uh, I, I literally don't think any other character on your team has flashes. So just further emphasizing the point of how important it is that you are with your team uh, when you guys are taking areas. All right, scoreline 8 to 11. We do have ult here. Bomb is top mid. There's the arrow. I mean, you probably want to dodge the arrow, but nonetheless... Okay, ulting in. You ult a little far back here. I I, I honestly prefer clearing out uh, B main first. That way you can get onto site with the ult. End up missing the shots there on the stage. Looked like you were still moving while you were shooting. And unfortunately, not going to get anything. No information. No, you got a little information, but no positions really gained. You just kind of took B main control, which you could have done without the ult. Um, <clears throat> no one was able to get into site behind you. Your bomb is actually on cat currently. So even if you took site, they still have to come through. Um, this to me is a perfect example of a team not playing together where you have the opportunity to go into a site with your team, with the bomb, clear off the site with the ult. You, but instead you, you just got your jet with you. Your bomb's nowhere close. You ult too far back. You can't really get too much value. No one follows it in. It's the perfect example of kind of knowing what to do, but not executing it properly and, and not having the support from your team that you would need to actually make a play. All right, 8-12, match point. Still a chance, though, here. Do have the Phantom. Nice little spray down there onto the Phoenix, getting the first kill. Now, moving into site, potentially. Let's see. Holding. There's the flash. Player spotted. Was that a player spotted, or was someone just shooting? I think someone was actually just shooting. Oh, definitely want to be careful with how you're moving uh, around the, the wall there. Or, excuse me, around that door. Remember, they can shoot your feet. Picking up the omen, going for the little hip fire. I think, uh, oh, excuse me, the Odin, not an omen. You didn't pick up a literal person. Um, and now in that situation, you know, I don't hate to pick up. Obviously, Odin, very, very strong. Oh my goodness, Jet, you have to be watching that tree. 
But in that situation, I still think you probably just keep your rifle. You've been doing really well with it. All right, let's see what your Viper can do. Um, now they know where she is. Is this the clutch? Will the game go on? It will not. <laughs> All right, so GG's, everybody. Uh, Bradley obviously having a decent game score-wise. But I would say he left He left a lot on the table um, and made a lot of mistakes. And, and these are the VODs I love, where we get an opportunity to see someone do, do very well. The classic, you know, I drop 20, 20, 30 kills every game and still lose. This is a great example of that, actually. So thank you, Bradley, for submitting this. Um, let's talk about that. All right. So in conclusion, I think we can sort of sum this thing up with, with a few talking points here. First and foremost, I think that you are going to be a good player. I think you have the potential. Um, you're making a lot of good plays, a lot of clutches, and I like that, especially for someone in bronze. However, there are definitely some things we have to work on. First and foremost, positioning. Make sure you're not over-rotating. And if you do want to rotate, remember, you can push through and, and sort of get a flank going as well. You don't always have to run through CT. A lot of those times when you were the A player and you were just running back CT, you could have pushed up A main and held a, a much different position and gained map control. That way, when the enemy team rotates back through you, you have that possibility to get those kills there since it seems like you really like to go help your team in those situations. Now, on top of that, we have to talk about ability usage. I think that you did not use your abilities uh, as much as you could have on Phoenix. For example, there were times when you could have healed yourself with your Molly and you didn't. There were times when you could have healed yourself with your Flame Ball and you didn't. Um, there was also, I think, very few Flame Balls used, if any. Remember, you have to remember this, Bradley. The Flame Ball is incredibly good and can be substituted. Uh, in place of smokes in certain situations so that you can get into sites or take areas or retake a site with the flame wall. And I just didn't see you using it at all during this game. And also, it can heal you. On top of that, of course, we saw you getting your ult. I think there was a few times you could have grabbed the orb a bit more or maybe taken a bomb defuse to get your ultimate. But you use your ult. The only problem is you got almost no value out of it throughout this game. Now, remember, if you're going to use your ult, especially on attack to take sights, you want your team there. You want your bomb there with you. Um, try to ult as close to the site as possible so that you can get on it and as clear as much as possible. On top of that, you want your team to follow you in if possible as well. You guys want to get as much value as that Phoenix out of the Phoenix ult as possible. And I think throughout this VOD, we just did not see enough of that. You know, we saw you kind of ulting far back, running in, instantly dying, or maybe doing one thing and then dying, not really getting any kills with the ult. Almost all of your kills, I think, were just from you actually and not from within your ult which, you know, isn't a bad thing. It says you're doing really well. It just says to me you're leaving a lot on the table and that you could be doing a lot better in these games. I think you dropped 26 kills. You could have had 35-plus, I think, easily. Um, I think this is definitely a game. You work on some of these things I talked about. You're going to win these games moving forward. So you, you definitely have what it takes. I would say, you know, work on that positioning. You know, work on your ability usage. Your aim is pretty good for your rank. Obviously, you can always work on it. Crosshair placement was a little off at some points. Remember, you were aiming a little low at some points. You work on these things, though. I think you're going to the top. Good luck, and uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy, and peace.